everybody, I'm Judy Saul, also known as Tie-Dye Judy. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I do the rainbow swirl pattern. Here's an example of one that I've done. Um, it's got all six colors of the rainbow. Uh, it's a round pattern. You can actually use this pattern for more than just the rainbow colors, but um, this is the one that uh, people seem to want to learn how to do. So I'm going to first demonstrate how I uh, create the fold and then the next segment will show you how I apply the dies and you know uh, if you've done any tie dyeing at all I'm sure you've probably tried to do rainbow swirls uh, when I first started tie dyeing I, I figured if I could ever get a good rainbow swirl I would, I would have gotten to the, the zenith of tie dyeing and uh, when I first tried it, I discovered it was a little more difficult uh, than I would have imagined. And there's a couple tricks I've learned that have helped me to avoid things like splattering, uh, to help me to keep from getting muddy colors together. So those are the things I want to uh, kind of go over today and, and hopefully help you in, in being able to do a better rainbow swirl yourself. So I'm going to readjust the camera and then we'll get started. Okay, I'm back, and what I have here is a clean, dampened shirt. Wide. Uh, I've laid it flat on my table. I do it face down because the bottom part of the shirt will stay flatter than the, the top part when I uh, swirl it around my fork, which is what I use to anchor uh, when I create the swirl. And when I dye the shirt, I usually start with the flat side so that I can get uh, my markings as even as, as possible. And what I usually will do, instead of starting with the swirl smack in the middle of the shirt, I usually put it a little bit off-center. Uh, it just gives it a little more visual interest uh, when you dye it. And all I do, I've got a salad fork. Everybody's got one. Or a dinner fork will work as well. And I just press down at the point where I want the center of the swirl. And I begin to turn it around. And as you can see, the shirt creates folds as I turn it and I will adjust um, every once in a while because the shirt has a tendency to stick to the table because it's damp. So I kind of help it along as I go and I twist and I reshape a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to keep the folds as even uh, as possible uh, as far as height uh, so that I don't have any big crevices or, or you know valleys and I just continue on. Uh, bringing the shirt around. And then when I finally get it to the point where it's pretty circular, and I've got my creases where I want them, and I'll go ahead and remove the fork, and I will use three rubber bands to hold this in place. And the reason I do three rubber bands is because it'll create six pie shapes um, for me to apply the die. Since there's six dies, it's nice to have six segments uh, so that you get a pretty equal uh, division of color. And I'm trying to get the point where I cross the rubber bands pretty much over the center uh, of the circle. So I sometimes do a little adjusting just to, to get it to the point where I've got relatively even divisions and I'll check on the other side just to see how we're doing and do some more adjusting. And so now um, here's where the center is and I've got my six sections. They don't have to be equal in size. As a matter of fact, um, there's a couple of colors I prefer to have smaller uh, divisions such as yellow. Yellow is a very potent color. Uh, another one that's pretty potent is red. And another thing that I try and do, and this is as a result of customer feedback, since I've been doing these, I'm going to move this camera just a little bit for the moment. Um, when I first started doing these, I really didn't pay any attention to where I was putting which color. And anytime I had a shirt where I had yellow on the top, people didn't necessarily like yellow next to their face. Don't ask me why. Uh, but they felt like it made them look like a carrot. So I have evolved to the point where I almost consistently will put my blue color right around the neck. Uh, people like that better. 
And, you know, so I just, I do it that way. And when I start dyeing, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few layers of, of uh, paper towels underneath. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would tell you that you should use um, newspaper to recycle it, and that's fine. The reason I'm using paper towels is because as I apply the dye, I'm going to be tilting this slightly, and I'll show you why when I get to that point. But I just like to have something where I can actually tilt the shirt so that when I apply the dye, I'm not turning my container over and having the dye splatter. Okay, so next thing is the gloves. Always have to have the gloves on. And I've got my bucket of clean water here so that I can clean off my gloves if I get dye on them because another way that you transfer color in an unwanted fashion is when you get dye on your gloves and you don't rinse. So I've learned over the years to just, you know, automatically rinse every time I'm done with a particular color. Now I'm going to move this back down again so you can see a full, there we go, full picture. And I'm going to start out, as I said, I'll be doing blue here. I try and start out with the lightest color first and work my way to the darkest. So I'm going to be doing yellow, orange, red, and then come back here and do green, blue, purple. And I've got my dyes lined up in that order. Okay, so these are fresh dyes. I just mixed these today. And I'll wipe that off, make sure I don't have anything on the splatter. Okay, now here's where I'm tilting this so that I can bring my dye bottle over. And I usually start in the middle of the segment that I'm dyeing and just start gently applying the dye, creeping upward towards the middle, and then letting it flow out a little. And I do want some color to overflow in between the sections. I'm, I'm one of these people, I, I like to have colors that blend together. So when I get to the point where I'm adding the other dyes, I'm going to be over dyeing parts of the section I've already dyed so that I have secondary colors. And as I apply this, and I should stop and mention, uh, this shirt has been pre-soaked. No, it hasn't. I screwed up. 